Hey you folks, Quilly King here, and welcome to another episode of our Project Caprica series, where we are trying to make a 4X strategy game in Unity. Now, last episode, um, we had a lot of like it, nice sort of nasal gazing uh, discussion and thought as I, as I created some of the data, but I wasn't happy about how much we actually truly got done. So I'm hoping to be able to hammer through uh, a little bit of stuff fairly quickly today. Of course, there's still gonna be our usual level of explanation, but hopefully we can keep that speeding along. So to that extent, I wanna work on creating our actual visual element for our star field over here. And in fact, I have started by, by getting us ready, by getting us a little uh, 3D star set up over here. This is simply a sphere with a texture attached to it. It's got a empty game object as the root, which is always a good idea because then what you can do is you can do all sorts of resizing and rescaling and rotation and whatever of your actual model information uh, inside of that. And then none of that translates over here. In fact, it'll probably end up getting nested into something else altogether. We shall see. So I got a new folder here for all of our graphics, our star graphics, and that's gonna be subbroken down into to the texture files, the material file, and the star over here. This material right now, I just grabbed these um, these textures from, I guess it's textures.com over here. And uh, I just applied it to the standard material here with using the emission so that it's nice and bright. In practice, I think that's probably gonna be a bit overkill. We might um, just use like an unlit shader or something like that is probably gonna be fine, but I didn't wanna go too much work um, to get that initially set up. So that's it. So it's just a prefab that's got that. I think we're gonna do one more thing, just to add a couple of little, a little bit of fanciness to it. I would like, I think the star to rotate ever so slightly. So I'm gonna go and make an actual, a script that I've made like a million times. Um, and it's just handy, a little script that all it does is it rotates a game object. There's gonna be no no logic in here that interacts with the, um, with the actual say game code or game logic or anything like that. That's not what it's here for. It's a purely visual effect. It's gonna be a mono behavior. Uh, I like to define a public vector Wow, okay, everything is reloading, but all right, that's fine. Vector three, thank you. Okay, Visual Studio is being a little bit odd here. How long did that take to save? Thank you. All right, um, probably just something like, I don't know, velocity or something like that. Uh, I mean, really, it's like the rotation. Rotation, velocity doesn't make sense. Rotation speed, there we go. Something of that nature. Um, and I'll have it default to a new vector three that vo rotates around its y-axis typically. That might not be right here, but just to set some sort of thing, and let's say it rotates, um, and this is in degrees, 360 degrees per second or something like that. That's gonna be the idea. And then here we're gonna go with this dot transform dot rotate. And all we're gonna do is rotate using their rotation speed as our Euler angles, and we're gonna multiply by time to delta time. So it's gonna rotate by a certain amount of degrees over the axis de determined by this vector. It's just a nice little piece of code that does what it's supposed to based on the tin. Notice I applied this to the, like the, the model as opposed to the core game object, because the core game object will have no rotation whatsoever. Um, and a nice thing to do is something like um, uh, runs, uh, execute in edit mode. That's that's what I wanted over here. So this piece of code will run even when we're just in the editor, in theory. Uh, do I have to add it to the entire class? Hang on. I haven't done this be, uh, in a long time here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, right, that's what it is, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just looked it up the reference. You don't apply this tag to the um, to the function, you apply it to the class like this. And then what it does is this class will run its update as well as its start and I guess on enable and whatnot in the editor. Now keep in mind that can lead to weirdness depending on what your object is supposed to do and whatever. But for something like this, it shouldn't be any kind of issue whatsoever. And yet it is still not running. Oh, how come? Seriously? So this didn't take here as a default. Maybe because I'd already written the code. If I tell this script to reset, there we go. Okay, I was really confused as to like why I didn't take those changes, but it already had one version of it. Um, I just want to set this to a, a, a default value that sort of looks like vaguely cool in general. Now the, um, the update rate of some of the things that you see here are gonna be 
It's all a little wonky. Oh yeah, it's only when you have it selected that runs. Ah, no, there's gotta be a way to do it otherwise. But anyway, let's just move on. If we do hit play, there we go. And we had a prompt or frame rate update because the editor doesn't update um, super fast. So we got that. Now that's gonna be too fast for a star, but I'm still happy with that as a default for the core object. Oh, it was still, did I not actually reset it? Maybe that's what was going on. It's still a little, it's gonna be a little fast for this. Um, the stars, I just want a slow little rotation. If we get a proper sort of frame rate on this, oh, that looks lovely. That thinks that's gonna be nice. Okay, so I have this like visual idea for the star over here. And I think this size for the star is gonna be great when we're looking at a sort of star system view. We might shrink it down just to scooch in there, but probably not that much. However, when we're looking at the galactic view, this is certainly gonna to be too big for a star. And that's what I wanna work on here. I wanna have some sort of, so in the galaxy view here, right? We got the UI overlay in the system view. What I'm gonna make is a empty. Again, we're, we may still change things to just be one canvas at some point, right? Right now the UI overlay is the canvas object. It might not be like that. We'll see how it goes, but we're gonna have a game object here, which I think is just gonna be something like galaxy, okay? because we've called one of our, our data scripts over here Galaxy, which I think is gonna be fine. Actually, um, we already used Galaxy View over here. There's maybe something, could call it Galaxy Content. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's really the Galaxy Visuals, which is a little redundant with Galaxy View, but we may, again, we may rename these things to end up with something that we're a little happier with. So what I'm gonna want is I'm gonna want a collection of stars in this galaxy. Um, I'm gonna want them sort of moved around a little bit. Just to, just to say, yeah, see, we, we are getting some UI updates there. It's kind of neat. I wonder if, can I get it to run all the time? There's, there's probably, it's probably an editor setting that determines whether or not it's updating constantly. So as long as I'm dragging and moving, it does. Anyway, that's fine. Um, so size wise, it's obviously a little bit off. So what we'll probably do is in the galaxy visuals here, where we'll actually apply some sort of scaling uh, to about quarter size. That seems vaguely reasonable. Remember, this window size is a little small. If I go and maximize on play over here, and we've got something like this, it might still be a little bit big, but I think this is gonna be a fine start. In fact, I dare say this will in fact be too big for our various star systems. I kind of think what's probably gonna happen, this might be the appropriate size for the kind of, I don't know, dot or click area or whatever for each star system. I could see our little star the star graphic itself being quite a bit smaller, and then maybe putting some sort of glow around it or something like that, um, you know, in, in the future. But for now, I'm gonna leave it at this size because I think they're gonna be easy to spot and that's gonna be okay. All right, so we've got some sort of thing like that, lovely. Um, let's work on actually generating a galaxy for, full of stars. We're not gonna worry about generating the planets for the star systems or anything like that. We're just gonna generate some galaxy. Our first pass will probably just randomly blob them all over. If you were around for the live stream I did on Saturday, where we all had a 10 or 15 minute discussion about pro program and that was it. Um, we had a discussion about how we might do the, um, the, the sort of map generation to get a nice sort of scattering of stuff because just playing random stuff is, is not gonna lead to a balanced map, but that's gonna be okay for our very first pass. So in our galaxy code over here, we've got, um, we've got the idea that our star systems will probably be in some sort of list and we'll probably just refer to star systems based on their ID. I considered renaming star system to just star, but it doesn't make it much of a difference. And in practice, um, we could have binary systems or something like that, which is really just gonna be a star graphic that's got two blobs in it instead of just one. Um, there's not gonna be any special code for it, it's just gonna be a visual thing. But anyway, I think conceptually it makes sense. So we might have some sort of constructor. Now, the thing is, is the constructor going to be responsible for actually, what are you whining? Oh, because you're not supposed to actually return anything. Um, if we're actually generating the galaxy, uh, we could, we could not. I think, I think I won't. We'll have this sort of instantiate some of the things like do something like, hey, let's go and make this into a new list, for example. But I think that might be the extent of it. Instead, what we'll probably have is some sort of public void generate galaxy and there'll probably be, you know, a series of parameters. Um, most notably might be something like int num players, int um, size, 
uh, where we've got a galaxy size that's, you know, small, medium, large, huge kind of thing, which is just going to affect the number of stars that we generate or something like that. Um, and probably some other things, right? Galaxy age and so on, other modifiers that might use. Maybe there's going to be different types of galaxies, like, you know, we want a spiral galaxy versus a cluster one versus whatever. But for now, we'll leave it there. We can add extra parameters later on. Again, our first pass, we're just going to be sort of generally blobbing them out. And almost certainly, we're going to have some sort of function that's like save galaxy um, some kind of file handle, question mark. We don't know what, what you know how we're going to save, or maybe just a string, then it could get saved in a variety of different ways, and then some sort of load galaxy function. And, you know, they're probably, maybe it'll be booleans, um, or maybe they'll just throw exceptions. I don't know. We'll, we'll do something. That's going to be much later on. So, um, uh, first pass, just make some random stars for us. Now, one of the things that I just realized, uh, we can get rid of this little rotate code, our star system, I don't think we have a position for the stars. And I think that's something we're going to need. You know, where in the galaxy is this star located? I guess we could just save this as a vector 2. We could, okay, so we could have a pair of ants or a pair of floats. We could have a vector 2. We could have a vector 3. Now, I think that, you know, some people like, oh, we can have, you know, the whole map being 3D, you can rotate around, stars above and below and things like that. And yeah, I mean, sure, in space, there's stuff in every direction. Now, generally speaking, galaxies are mostly, like, flattened out from the rotation. And, you know, we're, we're doing a subset of a whole galaxy in terms of, you know, we're just picking out some interesting stars and, and whatever. I think from a, from a usability platform, so, like, from a realistic platform, it's not, it's not unreasonable to think of things as mostly a 2D plane. But from a usability platform in particular, it's just much easier to work with a map that's just in 2D for the player. Um, I think adding the 3D element is not necessarily that helpful. That being said, look at something like, um, unless I'm wrong, I think Stellaris is like this. Yeah, yeah, stars can be slightly above or below the the primary plane right they can be a little high or a little low they still get laid out in a 2d way and then i think there's just basically a little bit of noise that gets added to their vertical position just to break up the look a little bit which we may or may not do but all that being said why don't we just store the locate the, the the position of a star as a vector three now you know should this be writable? Should it be changeable? Should it be whatever? Should it be public? Should it be an accessor function? Should it be a property? Uh, we can revisit those in the future. For now, let's just do it public over here. And uh, we can we can retune things um, depending on how we want to change this. Maybe we'll, we'll always have an accessor function that just looks like a vector three, but internally we store it differently. There's all sorts of things that we can do with it. For now, let's just keep going and that'll be okay. Primary goal, just get some code written. Try not to make it too bad. But more important, just get something on, on the paper and then move on from there. You can always fix it later. It's too easy to just sit around thinking about this stuff forever and never get anywhere. Um, so for the size, I mean, the, the size of the galaxy, I, I don't know how that's going to be represented. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll use enums or something later on. We're, we're mostly going to ignore these values for now. Um, we'll just We'll just set some sort of thing. Actually, at this point, the size will probably be something like number of stars. Actually, that's probably much better rather than size because the size modifier is just a, a UI setting, right? A screen we pick small, medium, large, whatever. But really what we're doing is then we're telling the galaxy generator, oh, uh, make us a galaxy with 80 stars or, or whatever the hell it is. So let's go ahead and let's see. 80 stars would be 10 stars per player. That seems like a lot. Now, not all of those stars will have habitable planets. Um, now, if we're talking about a Stellaris type thing, 10 stars per player is actually honestly fairly reasonable. If we're talking about something like Master of Orion, that seems like a little bit too much. Let's do something like, I don't know, let's do something like 50 stars. Just arbitrarily done. Something, something kind of vaguely like that. Um, and we'll see how much that is. Uh, so we're not going to use the number of players at this point. We're um, just going to generate 50 stars and give them random locations. So we have 
you know, we have this constructor over here for the star system. Do we want the star, uh, the, the constructor to require parameters or not? Like it, it really comes down to, to so many different things. Like the whole generate planet should be called in the constructor. Should the constructor require an initial position? I think it's probably reasonable to say this, although the problem, the reason I'm hesitating is because when you're loading something, this is a discussion we're going to want to have at some point, but you can imagine, right? Save galaxy or sorry, load galaxy. Instead of it being a function called load galaxy could absolutely just be a constructor that accepts a file handle. Um, and I think I, I definitely used to do stuff like that. Like lots of different constructors for different, you know, um, situations and things. I think, especially with things like file loading things, um, because of the different ways you can do stuff, the different ways serialization can work. I've, I've come to believe that you're shooting yourself in the foot a little bit if you try to do that stuff as part of a constructor. It's a little bit better to have a very simple constructor that, again, you know, maybe just make sure your data structure is instantiated um, and then use another function to, to create something, to, um, um, to, to, to populate your data, you know, something like a generate function or a load function. I could see ourselves, rather than having things called save galaxy, we could just have something like save load. And actually that might be better. And just conceptually, I'm gonna have the load be next to generate because they're actually gonna have a fair number of things in common. I think we might do something like that. And the same thing will be true for the star system over here. We have this idea of generate planets, um, which we're gonna move out. So what I'm gonna have instead for generate planets, which will be private and that's gonna be fine. We're gonna have a public void generate um, star. Again, maybe we'll just call it generate. That's probably okay. And then we'll put the, the commented out thing over there. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll do that sort of thing. Generate. And then again, there'll probably be some sort of thing over here for load and save, which apparently I didn't copy properly. Okay. Boom. Uh, public void generate. All right. Something like that. Okay. So for our galaxy, we're going to do what? What are we doing? Um, probably just something like four to size, right? From I equals zero to I is less than size. So we're gonna loop 50 times. We're gonna make 50 stars. Uh, so we're gonna do something like um, star system SS equals new star system. Um, SS dot position is equal to, um, I mean, there's random functions that make it a little, that, that you can, there's random with like circles, spheres, all kinds of different stuff. I think we'll just go new vector three. That's going to be okay. Um, and oops, no, like that. No. Um, so one thing we're gonna have to decide at some point is our coordinate system. Like, we probably just want to talk about things as an X and Y setting, right? Now, visually speaking, uh, where are we? It depends on where our camera is. I guess right now, like by default, our camera is just looking forward. Technically, Y is higher up, right? But I think it's probably going to make our life a lot easier to think of things like X and Y. Um, even though if we imagine that we're looking down into the galaxy, really it should be like if the camera was a top down camera, then we should really be talking about X and Z. And then the Y would be the height off the galactic plane. But I think that'll just make our life way more annoying. We'll keep the camera facing just forward. We'll use X and Y to position the planets around. And uh, Z will be that depth, that the depth from the galactic plane, if we're going to do anything like that, which we may not. Um, and anyway, I think that'll just make our life a lot easier. So let's go. So we're going to do random dot range and what are our galactic bounds? Um, you know, probably like the galaxy might have like an actual size just in terms of bounds. We could like, we can scale the size of the galaxy based on this, but I think in practice, we can just end up with a denser galaxy. Let's pick an arbitrary value, like a hundred. Um, const int galaxy width, right? 
a hundred, something like that. So for a random range, we're gonna do from negative this in half to positive this in half, right? So the planets will be positioned from minus 50 to plus 50, or the stars will be positioned from that is, is what I mean. And that's it, uh, random dot range. I don't know what, like the autocomplete on that has kind of gotten annoying. So just, it, it, I think it, it literally makes no difference what these numbers are. We just have to have some sort of number for the random number generator. And then what we'll do is we'll just adjust scales and camera position and whatever, just to have everything be happy. Um, and, and we can change this number and that's gonna be okay. So this is like, um, uh, total width height of the uh, uh, range of star positions in Unity world units. So it's a visual element, and again, maybe the visual elements don't belong anywhere in this otherwise pure data class. Uh, but the stars actually, the stars do need positions in the data point of view, because the star position, the distance between two stars is gonna determine travel time between them. So it is actually something that doesn't exist from just a, a, a visual point of view. Okay, good, sorted. Um, so we created a new star system, we set a position, and then we probably tell it to generate itself like that. Now, in this generate function, we're probably gonna want something like, um, galactic age richness info, or maybe we get told what kind of star to generate, especially for player starting planets. I, I don't know, so maybe the galaxy, and that might be reasonable, maybe the galaxy here will, will pass, you know, do we pass exactly what type of star system we want? You know, um, player starting, Stars are special. Um, do we want to vary star types uh, based on distance from galactic center? Right, is there an inherent difference between the stars near the middle of the galaxy versus the edge? And so on and so forth. There's all sorts of things. So I suspect this generate function won't actually require galactic info. The generate function will probably ask, hey, what kind of star do you want me to create? And actually, yeah, I, I think that's good. Um, int star type, have it just default to zero. Um, and there might be there might be more info actually I'll, I'll i'll leave that comment in there that's going to be okay but there'll be some sort of star type so here what we're going to do is we're just going to generate a generic yellow star with no planets um and that that's really it this dot star type is equal to star type um and that's it so we have the star system graphic field that is somehow gonna need some stuff But I don't think this is, so the star system class here is a pure data class. I don't think it's gonna be, this is this is here as a placeholder for our graphic system. So I think our graphic system is gonna be the, the one doing the job of, well, let's look at the star type, let's figure out something and populate there, or we'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll figure out exactly how that gets in there. For now, we just log the star type. Um, we've already got a position set, right? So this sets our position, we generate the star type, I guess that's it. So we get an array. Oh, um, star systems. How come you're indented over here? Dot add SS. There it is. That was a weird little indent thing. So we add ourselves to the list and that's that. Done. Probably need a lot more stuff later on, but we're gonna start with this. Um, okay. 
So you have that, you have that. We have our galaxy view here. Oh, right, we have our universe manager here, which doesn't have a script added to it yet. Universe manager. We're gonna do this. So script wise, we'll have a folder probably for like, like graphics. These, these are scripts just for graphical effects, like something that rotates, that's gonna be fine. The universe manager just might be in the root scripts folder, like or there might be a managers folder, but managers could imply all kinds of things like sound managers and whatever. I think it's kind of okay for universe manager to just be this like big global thing. Um, it is gonna be a mono behavior. So um, this script is responsible for holding the main galaxy data object um, triggering uh, file uh, save loads or triggering the generation of a new galaxy. Um, maybe also gets um, callbacks from and turn button, something like that. So clearly this is gonna have access to that. Uh, universe manager, are we gonna add it to our namespace? Uh, what's the namespace? Caprica? Using Caprica. I think that's fine. I don't know if it has to belong to our namespace. We might have a separate namespace for our Caprica data classes versus our Caprica sort of controller and visual classes. Just again, it's nice to avoid collision with other, um, with other packages, but I guess it's going to be okay. All right, so we've got that. So we'll create some sort of... Um, well, we'll just call it generate. Generate. We can make it public because it can maybe respond to a button or something like that. Debug.log. And we'll put a nice little thing here. Da 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 da. Generate. Um, generating a new galaxy. So this is going to be the thing that basically ends up running when you load a new game in, in some way. Um, we, there's always the thing like, how do we do with scenes? How do we do a loading scene versus a this scene? How do we want that to work? That's gonna be a problem for later. Um, probably what there will be is some sort of persistent data that lasts between scenes because probably we want say our main menu to be in its own scene because there's no reason we have to have loaded all the other assets at that point. Um, and then if the player hits the new game button, we show them a menu for parameters and things like that, you know, galaxy size, number of players, etc., etc., etc. difficulty, for example. And then those things get saved to some sort of object that will persist through scene changes. Now, it could be a game object that's got the don't destroy on scene load or, or whatever that tag is. Um, but I always find that a little bit awkward because then what happens is like, Okay, you've got that, and what happens if you quit back to the main menu, and then you hit new game again, and then you're in a scene that creates another one of these objects that won't be deleted. Now you've got two of them. Now you can have them check to see if there's always read one that exists and self-destruct and so on. But this is probably just a place for just some sort of static object um, that just you know gets set when you go through this menu, and then some other thing like over here ends up reading it or something of that nature that's gonna be okay. Um, Generating a new galaxy, so uh, we just set galaxy to be a new galaxy, and galaxy dot generate, and yeah, there we go. It's got some defaults. I mean, we're gonna want to pass some more info in here later on, but for now, that's okay. Um, in fact, the galaxy thing over here might have some static stuff, but probably I, I first see something like public static class galaxy config. Um, uh, this gets uh, filled out 
uh, by um, some kind of new game screen and is used by the generate function to um, tune the game parameters. And how we do something like that, right? We could set some sort of public static int int indexer. That was weird. Um, num players have a default to eight. Public static int uh, galaxy um, num stars num stars equal to fifty. So then over here, instead of passing this stuff like that. Um, we do something like uh, galaxy config dot num stars. Boom. Uh, consider consider reading the defaults from a config file. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, so now we're all set up. We don't know, you know, where these numbers got set. Someone will, someone will do it. I mean, this is very much a global value, but it's not, these are not bookkeeping values. These aren't things that need to be, you know, sheltered and encapsulated or anything like that. Uh, all this is used by is some function that sets it up initially. If a bunch of people want to mess these numbers or whatever, literally doesn't matter except for the generate call. And that's a good way to just persist some data. Um, between the scene changes. It doesn't create a bunch of game objects that have to be managed. Um, it, it generates no garbage collection whatsoever. There's just a couple of ints that are sitting around in memory um, and they're there. I mean, in a sense, you could create something and then destroy it after you generate things, but the static memory is like, it's zero overhead. It's so easy to work with and it's gonna be fine. And I think that's a lovely way to do it. Um, oh, oh, right, so this const, see this whole like const over here? Actually, it's probably fine to move it in here. I was gonna say, maybe it's not the sort of thing, maybe we want certain expectations about it, um, but I think it's fine. Galaxy width, because maybe, maybe we do want some slider that helps determine the space between stars that can be tuned in some way. Um, you know, we want a sparser galaxy as an option or a denser galaxy, you know, how close together do we want the stars to be packed? So we'll do something like that. We'll remove you, excellent. And then over here, uh, galaxy config dot um, galaxy width. We actually use this number a fair bit. And for all we know, that it might need some sort of massaging. So what I'll do is I'll have an int galaxy width is going to be equal to that. Here, we'll lowercase this just for convention. And I think I'll feel a little bit better doing something like that because we might we might need to tweak this for some reason. Um, to adjust it. We might have this number not be in Unity world units. Um, we might want to have it be some other value type idea. Could be an enum to determine sort of like how sparse the galaxy is. And then over to here, we do some sort of calculation, maybe again, based on some sort of const or something like that, but that's going to be okay. All right, so... Uh, debug dot log um, num stars generated plus this dot count uh, yeah boom boom so if we get to this point now we're still gonna have these three visual stars and then we're gonna generate assuming all went well 50 stars let's find out if we've screwed everything up if we made an infinite loop accidentally uh, nothing is happening why universe manager has a thing Oh, right. I'm not actually calling this generate. Now, I'm not going to want this in the start. This is going to be something in re response to something else, or it's going to check, like, are we supposed to be loading or this or that or whatever. But yeah, we're just going to force the generator over here. That's going to be fine. Boom. There we go. Generating new galaxy. We've generated 50 stars. Lovely. Now, we can't see them yet. So that's going to be the next step is how do we get these galaxy visuals to show up? I think this is probably a, a good place to put in a tiny little cut. Um, and what's going to happen in the next one, we're going to generate Unity game objects that map to each one of these stars. Similar to how we've done things in a few other uh, bits and pieces, um, I think we can do it a lot cleaner and a lot of simpler in this case. So we're going to, yeah, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a, a, just an easy little process to get all these stars to show up visually on the screen. 
looking forward to it. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye. This episode is brought to you thanks to the awesome people who support me at patreon.com slash quill18, including these mic check supporters. We've got Armin Nobari. We've got Rarskal. We've got Ewald Schult. We've got Jason Yanity. Jeff Fellows. John Pavlik. Jordan Smilovic. Smilovic. We've got Tiburon, we've got Julien Auger Lafont, we've got Marius Field Vold, Martin Bauer, Mighton, M- Michael McClintock, Money Mix, Neil Blakey, Milner, Pavel Zdanoff, Speedy Savant, Steven Sager, Thomas Oberson, and everyone who watched, shared, favorited, and su- subscribed to these videos. Thank you so very much.